I had no idea I was missing one fundamental aspect in the whole colour correcting and colour grading process that would eventually completely change the game for me and take my footage from looking like this to something far, far better. About four years ago, possibly even five now actually, when I was getting into filmmaking, I was so eager to get my footage to look cinematic, for want of a better word. I basically just wanted it to look film-like, but I had absolutely no idea how to achieve that. I looked at other filmmakers' work, wishing mine would look half as decent. I kept reading articles online about LUTs, watching YouTube videos that mentioned them as well. I was so hopeful. So I bought a cinematic LUT pack, slapped the LUT onto my footage, and I was even more disappointed. I abandoned that LUT pack thinking it was crap. I got another one, same result. Bought a few others in hopes of maybe finding that one magic bullet to transform my footage, but none of them did. I was completely baffled, and it wasn't until maybe another year, maybe two, that I finally truly understood why. Imagine a violin is preparing to play a piece of music. Before they can start playing, they have to make sure that the violin's perfectly tuned. If even one string is out of tune, the entire piece would be completely disrupted. This is the same for colour grading. The violinist could play the most beautiful piece according to their perfectly written sheet music, but if the violin wasn't correctly tuned to begin with, the performance won't resonate as intended by the composer. But the violinist can't blame the sheet music or the composer for that. Just like me, blaming the LUTs I bought all those years back was so off the mark because it wasn't the the LUTs that were the problem, I was. You can apply the most stunning colour grade or LUTs, but if the footage wasn't colour corrected properly first to create a solid foundation, you won't get the look that you were hoping for and you'll be just as disappointed and dejected as I was. And colour correction really means, or the way I look at it now, is that everything needs to look true to life in terms of lighting or exposure, white balance for the tone of the scene, and making sure that your footage has the best dynamic range possible, which means nailing the exposure before you even attempt to colour grade it. You really need that baseline. So for me, I think this all started to fall into place when I stumbled across Film Convert, who this video is sponsored by. And when I tell you I use their plugins Cinematch and Film Convert Nitrate on 90% of my videos and have done for the past few years, you'll understand why I rave about Film Convert to everyone and anyone who's in the same position I was all those years ago, frustrated and struggling with colour correcting and colour grading, and longing for their footage to look decent without too much effort or expertise. And the great thing about Film Convert is that you don't have to be a pro colour or even a pro filmmaker to get amazing results. You just need to start with a really good foundation. I can't stress this enough. And not having this foundation is often the reason why your footage looks rubbish when you try to color grade it. So there are two ways that you can make sure that your footage is prepped for colour grading. The first is by picking up one of these. This has been my absolute go-to in order to help with the process. I have like three of them in different sizes that I keep in different bags so that I always have one on me. And even though you can technically colour correct without one, just make life easier for yourself and get one is well worth investing in. The simplest way to use it for the first step is to hold it up in your scene in the most important place, like where the action is going to happen. So for example, if you're doing a talking head, you'd hold it up directly in front of you. If it's the environment, place it where you're going to film. I'm going to show you the very basics of using it in the second step and it's going to give you great results. You can go really far into the colour correction process, but honestly at this point just for YouTube, you don't really need to. Okay, so I've got my footage and I'm going to start by using Cinematch by Film Convert because it has all the tools that I'm going to need and it's a quick process to get your footage in the best state for grading. The biggest benefit of Cinematch though is to match footage from different cameras so that your video looks seamless. I've used it to match my GoPro footage to footage shot on my Sony a7S III and the results are brilliant but it's also great for colour correcting because of its tools. So the first thing that you need to do is select your camera profile from the sensor matching tab and you need to select your source camera. If you were trying to match footage between cameras, then you'd select the target camera that you want to match your source camera to. But for this, I'll just leave it blank as I'm going to be using it for colour correcting. Now, if you didn't want to colour grade your footage and you just wanted to convert your flat log footage into a normal colour space, you could toggle on the Rec. 709 transformation and after colour correcting the footage, it'd be completely usable as it is. But if you want to use Film Convert Nitrate to grade your footage, you can leave this off and I'll show you why in a little while. Under the Rec. 709 transformation, you'll see the exposure slider. You could adjust this by eyeballing it using the video scopes or waveforms, but you can do it more accurately by using false colours. And this is where the colour passport is going to be really helpful, because once you switch false colours on, you'll see that middle grey is selected. So when I look at the colour passport, I can adjust my exposure until the middle grey box is fully illuminated. Now, I get it, things happen very fast when you're filming, and you may forget to hold up the colour passport at times. It might just be inconvenient, or you may just 
forget it all together and in that instance you can use skin tones false colors and what I do here is adjust my exposure until my skin has no light gray on the highlights because if it does it means the highlights on my skin is overexposed and so is the rest of the scene and if it's dark gray then it means that it's underexposed so I tweak that as necessary and then I have a perfectly exposed scene and it truly works every time but the key here to have enough room to push and pull the footage around is to not overexpose your footage whilst you're filming because once the highlights are clipped this process won't save it so next is the white balance tools which also has false colors and once again if you use the color passport this is going to make life so much easier so with this I turn on false colors and start with temp and pay attention to the white square when you adjust the temperature slider you want that square to be white not orange or blue and then you do the exact same thing for the tint you can also look at the corresponding shades so for the tint for example magenta and green will all be illuminated and then the same goes for the white balance with the blues and the oranges They're the only tools that I need from Cinematch right now. If you were matching cameras, then you can use the rest of the settings to really fine tune the sensor matching so that the footage looks spot on. The next step in my process then is color grading. So now I'll pull up Film Convert Nitrate and do the same thing I did for Cinematch where I choose by camera profile. Once I've done that, you can see it's applied an effect, but don't worry, that's not it. You have to tweak a few sliders, but it's honestly such a quick process. So first is choosing the film stock. I have a couple of favorites, but I'm gonna go with this one for now. And then you can start to dial in the look using the film color and the cine to PFE, which is essentially like contrast. Next you have the grain and the cool thing about this is that you can freehand it or choose it based on the specific film size like Super 35 or 8mm, there are a few to choose from and then you can set the grain strength and the colour. There's literally no right or wrong way to do this, at this point it's all based on personal preference and the look that you're going for. Remember how I toggled off the Rec 709 transformation in Cinematch? Well that's because making all these tweaks in Film Convert Nitrate transforms it along the way. So you may see that the footage looks a bit dull at the moment, but as soon as I punch in some saturation, it's getting closer to that final look. And to be honest, I could leave it there, but I like to play around with the colour wheels, curves and levels just to fine tune the look a bit more. And then that's it, I'm done. So that is pretty much my process. You can download both Cinematch and Film Convert Nitrate on a trial basis with full access to all the controls. You'll just end up with a watermark on your footage until you wanna buy it. It's a great way to play around with it and see how you get on with no time limit. So I've dropped a link in the description and if at some point you do wanna buy it, then you can use the discount code Tabara G and it works for both Film Convert and Cinematch and you'll get 10% off. Thanks for watching. Do give the video a like if it was helpful. It helps out the channel and I'd be super grateful. And thanks to Film Convert for being such a massive supporter of my channel. Catch you guys later.